everybody, my name is Kayla and I am from Kayla's Little World YouTube channel and Facebook page. And today is Bible story time. And I am reading from my children's Bible, The Lion First Bible. And the title is Farmer Gideon's Men. Judges chapter 6 to 8 from your Bible. So now let us start reading. The people of Israel were hiding. They hid in caves. They hid in, hill, in the hills. They were hiding from the men on camels. The men on camels came riding into the promised land from beyond the river, the Jordan River. They took away the sheep. They took away the cows. They took away the donkeys. They trampled on the corn as soon as it was planted. Why did God let them? God still loved the people of Israel, but they had broken their promise to love him and to live as he wants. The people of Israel had no wool. They had no milk. They had no bread. They were afraid of the men on camels. There were too many of them to count. Help, help, please help us, they cried to God, and God answered them. You have broken your promise, God said. Yet now you are in trouble. You want me to help. And I will help because I still love you. God went to find Farmer Gideon. I have a special job for you, God said. You must rescue my people from those men on camels. But I can fight them, Farmer Gideon objected. I'm a farmer, not a soldier. You can if I help you, God said. The men on camels came riding in again from beyond the river, the Jordan River, too many of them to count. Then Farmer Gideon blew a long blast on his trumpet. Tan, tan, tara! He was calling for help and the men came running. Too many, God said. Tell the ones who are scared to go home. Still too many, God said, as Gideon watched them go. Take the ones who are left to the stream to drink. The ones I want will cut their hands and lap like dogs. That way they can keep a lookout for danger. The rest can go home. That just left 300 to fight the men on camels, who were too many to count. That night, God said to Gideon, Get up, it's time to go. Gideon gave every man a trumpet. He gave every man a flaming torch and a jar to hide it in. All was quiet. They crept up close to the men on camels who were still fast asleep. Now Gideon's men were all around their camp. Tara, 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 ra, ra, ra. What was that terrible noise in the quiet night? Gideon's men were blowing their trumpets. What was that blaze of light in the dark? Gideon's men had broken the jars that hid their flaming torches. The men on camels woke up in a fright. They were so scared that they leaped on their camels and fled. So that's the end of the story. It now is explaining time Bible explanation. So this story is actually after Joshua and before Samson. And at this time, there was no king. It was just judges who ruled over Israel. There was no king. So there was only judges to lead Israel. So anyways, let's go to Explaining Time Bible Explanation. The people of Israel were hiding. They hid in caves. They hid in the hills. They were hiding from the men on camels. So... Who are the men on camels? The men on camels were the Midianites. The Midianites were the men on camels. So why were they scared of the, of the Midianites? Because the Midianites, they took away everything that Israel had. They took everything they had. They took the animals. And then they destroyed the crops and they did very, they made life very miserable and hard for the Israelites. 
so that's why they were hiding because they want to hide some of their food or they want to make sure that they're safe from them from the Midianites because they think probably they're gonna get killed by the Midianites or something so anyways let's go start and continue the the men on camels who are the Midianites came riding into the promised land from beyond the river the Jordan River they took away the sheep, they took away the cows, they took away the donkeys, they trampled on the corn as soon as it was planted. Why did God let them? God still loved the people of Israel, but they had broken their promise to love him and to live as he wants. So, the promise of God, the, the, the people that promised to God, the promise was, God will be the only God of Israel. But they still worship idols and they still do evil and wicked things. They, they already know what's going to happen and they still do it. Why? Because it's already human nature. Like I've said in my other videos, they're just coming back and forth. But instead of the Philistines, this time it's the Midianites. This was before the Philistines. So on the Midianites, when things are going well, these people tend to forget God. And then when God punishes them, they go back to God. And then they don't get a punishment anymore. Just going back and forth, back and forth. Midianites, back, forth, back, forth. Philistines, back, forth, back, forth. It's just the same. So the problem, and why are they doing this? Because they do not think before they, they act. Now, what I meant is to explain a little to be more simpler or clearer i what i meant was we should always think before we act we have to think about the consequence if we're about to do something bad we have to always think of what was going to happen after we do the bad thing or what we're going to what is the consequence once you know the consequence you will not do the bad thing because if you know what's the consequence of course you're not going to do it the consequence makes us stop from doing it. So we know that we're not supposed to do it because if we do it, then the consequence is rare. So actually, I kind of do that often. I don't really think before I act. So I make my daddy very mad. Yes. I do not think before I do. I do not know that. I know the consequence. Yes, I know. I know everything I do. The consequence is my daddy, of course, would be mad. But I still don't think it through that the consequence. Because sometimes my daddy's not going to find out. And then somebody called my cousin tells my daddy. And then that's how he finds out. And that's my consequence. Yeah. Getting, getting my daddy mad. So... I do that often, so probably also did it once. You never thought of what you're going to do, and then you already did the action without thinking through or what the consequence is. So let's try to stop it together, you know? We can lessen that up. Because once we keep on doing it, it will become a habit. And we don't want it to become a habit, because when it does become a habit, then a habit's a habit. You cannot stop yourself from doing it. We can stop it. Only if we do it now. Because if we don't stop it later on, probably we'll be doing it every single day. The people of Israel had no wool. They had no milk. They had no bread. They were afraid of the Midianites. There were too many of them to count. You know how many Midianites are, Midianites are there? There are more than 100,000 Midianites. More than 100,000? 100,000 is already a big sum. But this is more than... So there must be a lot of Midianites during that time. Help, help, please help us, they cried to God. And God answered them, You have broken your promise, God said, yet you are in trouble. You want me to help, and I will help, because I still love you. And of course, God loves us all unconditionally, but just because God loves us unconditionally doesn't mean we can keep on doing wicked and evil things wicked things and evil things because you thought that it's not bad to do bad things or wicked things or evil things because 
God loves us, of course he would forgive us. Yes, he forgives us and he always gives us chances. And remember, on my last video, at the story of the enormous fish, I said, Do not waste all your chances before you have none. So this is why we should stop doing our wicked things and stop thinking that just because God loves us unconditionally, he will forgive us and give us as many chances as we want. No. We have to stop doing it before it's too late. Before we don't have any more chances. So, this is why we should probably lessen up doing our evil things. I know it's hard to do bad stuff because it's so easy to do bad stuff and so hard to do good stuff. God went to find Farmer Gideon. I have a special job for you, God said. You must rescue my people from those Midianites. But I can fight them, Farmer Gideon objected. I'm a farmer, not a soldier. So this is what he actually said. He actually said, he actually refused. At first, he refused the call. He refused God's call to him because this is what he said. My tribe is the least among all the tribes. So he said that there are 12 tribes, remember that. So he, he's saying his tribe is the least among all those 12 tribes. And then the next thing he said, my family is the least am am among all families in my own tribe. So he's, he's meant, he meant that my family is the least in my, his own tribe. So that's why he refused at first. But God said, you can if I help you, God said. So, if you think you cannot do it, God believes in you. If God believes in you, for sure you can do it. If you believe in yourself, if God believes in you, you'll try your best at doing it. That's what matters most. You can't just like, oh, as long as I did it, it's fine. As long as I did right, I don't need to try so hard on it. No, you have to try your best in everything. You know what I mean? We can't just like, oh, as, as long as I do it, even though it's not perfect, as li at least I did it. No, you have to try your best at everything. Of course you should. And if God believes in you, that's even better. Because in your eyes, something's imp impossible. But in God's eyes, it's possible for God. Nothing is impossible with God. So if God is with you, then what you if you think if you're doing something impossible, it will be possible because if God is with you. And even God believes you. If God is with you, he will make you do something great things. Because every time God calls to you, he will tell you to do something big, real big and exciting and also often dangerous. Very but as long as you believe in God, God believes in you, God is with you, you are with God. Nothing is impossible with God. So for sure, if you're doing something possible, it would be possible if God is with you. Even if you're an ordinary person, God will make you do great things. We will, and if, if you're an ordinary person, if you do great things, you are going to be a great person. That's why God can choose any or or um any ordinary person and make them a great person and make them do great things. He can choose any person he, and he can make them do great things. Really great things. The Midianites came riding in again from beyond the river, the Jordan River, too many of them to count. Then Farmer Gideon blew a long blast on his trumpet. Tan tan tara! He was calling for help and the men came running. Too many good said, tell the ones who are scared to go home. Now, when Farmer Gideon bl blew on his trumpet, there were 32,000 people who came to Farmer Gideon. Now God said, too many of them. But, 32,000 is still less than more than 100,000. And God yet still said, too many God said, tell the ones who are scared to go home. Now, it, now the amount was 32,000. The ones who are scared can go home. Now it was left 10,000 only. And God said, still too many, even less than 
100,000 or more than 100,000. God said it's still too many, God said. As Gideon watched them go, take the ones who are left to the stream to drink. The ones I want will cut their hearts in not like dogs, that way they can keep a lookout for danger the rest can go home. Now what God meant was, they brought all the 10,000 to drink water to the Jordan River. To a stream, I meant. And then, to see how they drink. Now look. He cut their hands in lot like dogs. So if it's like this, like this. Look at my eyes. It's still looking on the screen. Even if they drink, they can still see everything. So they can see if danger's happening. That's why it said they can keep a lookout. But the other people are this. They cannot see anything. No danger around. They can, they can only see water. That's why God chose only the ones who can. Cut their hands and lap like dogs. <laughs> God just left 300 to fight the Midianites, who were too many to count. That night, God said to Gideon, Get up, it's time to go. Gideon gave every man a trumpet. He gave every man a flaming torch and a jar to hide it in. All was quiet. They crept up close to the men on camels who were the Midianites who were still fast asleep. Now Gideon's men were all around their camp. Now actually they were divided in three groups. So for example, Gideon divided them in three. So if it's 300, of course, 100 on the first group, 100 on the second group, and 100 on the third group. So 100 plus 100 plus 100 is 300. So probably he divided them equally on each group. I'm not really sure. I wasn't, I wasn't born at that time. I wasn't born like thousands years ago. So I'm not really sure. But they were, for sure, what I know and believe, that they were divided in three groups. Ta-ra! 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 Oh my god, I was loud. What was that terrible noise in the quiet night? Gideon's men were blowing their trumpets. What was that blaze of light in the dark? Gideon's men had broken the jars that hid their flaming torches. The men on camels who were the Midianites woke up in a fright. They were so scared that they leaped on their camels and fled. So that's the end of the story. And what I need to tell you is that, do you know that, do you know that as long as Gideon was alive at that time, everything was peaceful. If Gideon died, then they go back to their old wicked ways again. <laughs> the reason why God told that, told Gideon to only get 300 he could choose the two, 32,000. Now here's a lesson for you. Now God said, He won because when when they win against the Midianites, if there's 32,000, the Israelites will think, Oh, I did this. We defeated the Midianites. But if it's 300, they'll see for sure God helped us. We're too, we're too little some to defeat the Midianites. More than 100,000 million nights for sure God did it. So God is trying to teach them. Now God is trying to teach them that He's the one true God, Almighty God. He can do anything. The impossible will turn to possible. Impossible that 300 would defeat more than 100,000. But God made it possible. So now the lesson for you is even if you think something is impossible, it will become possible if God is with you. So always remember that. So now let's start praying. Dear Lord, right now just pray for that you be with us always and make the impossible to possible. I pray for that we, we always follow you, Lord. We can keep your promise and we can lessen up doing our bad things. Oh Lord God, right now I just pray for that you bless us. I pray for that you do not punish us and I pray for that you will always forgive us. And I pray for you, make all of us stop our bad habits. Amen. Love you God in Jesus. Sorry for all our sins. Forgive all our sins. Amen. Love you God in Jesus. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye everybody. And I hope you learned something from this video. Goodbye everybody.